Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the Elio. This is a three-wheeled auto cycle. Now what we're looking at here is the fourth prototype. The fifth prototype is going to be the one most similar to the production version which will be coming out soon. This is a single-doored vehicle with seating for two. Very aerodynamic design up front. This vehicle has a drag coefficient of 0.25. MSRP comes to $6,800. That includes air conditioning and power windows. Now obviously this thing looks quite a bit different than everything else out there on the road, but in fact when you look at the numbers it's not all that different. In length the vehicle is very similar to a Nissan Juke, it's taller than a Scion FRS, and it has more ground clearance than a Subaru WRX. Rear seat legroom is similar to a Volvo S60, and headroom and legroom for the front driver is perfectly adequate. As far as power is concerned, it has a better power to weight ratio than the Chevy Trax, and it has nearly an identical 0 to 60 as a Toyota Corolla. The vehicle has an 8 gallon gas tank and can get up to 84 miles per gallon on the highway, giving it a range of well over 600 miles. It also has a top speed of over 100 miles per hour. Checking out the trunk, you've got about 2 cubic feet of cargo space and you can also fold down the rear seat for additional space. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look under the hood. Now what you're looking at here is of course a prototype engine, so this is not representative of what it will look like in the actual vehicle, though it is transversely mounted how it will be in the production Elio. Now the production engine is going to be fuel injected, single overhead cam, gas powered 3 cylinder, 0.9 liters producing 55 horsepower and 55 pound feet of torque. Engine power is sent to the two front wheels through a 5 speed manual transmission or an optional 5 speed automatic transmission. Up front you have what is essentially a double wishbone suspension with an additional linkage added in for the shock absorber and coil springs. Here you can see the steering linkage coming in and then the drive shaft here as well. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at the interior. Cloth seats, mechanically adjustable, one in front of the other. Okay, so sitting in the interior, uh, these seats are actually pretty comfortable, a good amount of cushion to them, these cloth seats, and you actually do have plenty of legroom here, so really nothing unusual about this cabin as far as uh, comparing it to other vehicles. I've got plenty of legroom in here, my knees don't come into contact with anything, and the seats are comfortable, and the sitting position is, you know, very similar to what you're already used to doing, so nothing unusual from that point. The only thing that's different, you know, is you're in the center of the car this time versus, you know, being on the left side or right side, depending on what country you live in. So as far as visibility, looking out the front doesn't look too bad, especially because these large windows to your left and right also come up pretty far, so you've got a good amount of visibility uh, there. You know, checking your blind spot either way, pretty simple to do. Looking behind you, you know, this is going to be closed off, so you're going to be using these mirrors and then looking behind you, but overall, this vehicle is really narrow, so you shouldn't really have any problem uh, seeing what's behind you just using these simple mirrors here. Now, this dashboard up here that we're looking at is not the production version, uh, but essentially, you know, that's just what they have here for this fourth prototype. The steering wheel here, leather wrapped, and you've got this little Elio insignia on the top, and you also do have uh, some cruise control functionality that looks like right here, so that's kind of cool that it has that. And then over here to the left, you've got your AC control, so very simple knob system, low, medium, high, where do you want the air blowing, and then what temperature did you want it to be, so pretty simple there. And then you've got these power windows here as well. So, you know, as far as the interior, it doesn't really feel all that unusual. It's not something you're not going to be familiar with. You've got your gear selector right here, your emergency brake right here. You've got a cup holder and some other little storage spaces throughout. You've also got a cup holder for the rear passenger. And here, this is actually pretty cool. So you can hook up a device to this system, and then you've got all kinds of different controls that you have on uh, you know, your iPad that you've got hooked up to the car. So you've got uh, you know, a thermostat and things like that. You've got your maps. You've got a navigation. Uh, you've got cameras for the front and rear. You have, you know, you can pull up your Bluetooth audio and so you can call people and have all that set up with this iPad right up front. Uh, you can change the color of the dashboard if you want to match the color of your vehicle, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we've got this remote control here. So you can actually start it, you know, if you're in your office or whatever and you want to start your car, you can do that uh, from in your office or whatever that may be. And with the camera, they were also mentioning that they've got it set up so that, you know, if you wanted to, you could have it so that if your car was in an accident, uh, if somebody backed up into it in a parking lot or something like that, you could have it turn on the cameras and start recording uh, at the front and rear or wherever it has cameras. Uh, and so you could record that incident for up to an hour and then you can use that footage, you know, to actually find out who hit your car. Great for people like me who've been hit, uh, I believe it's eight times, all without my car moving. So I'm pretty bad luck as far as that's concerned. 
twice in the Subaru and probably six or more times in the Integra. So a pretty cool little system that they've got here with this iPad. Uh, pretty good uh, functionality to it. And you know, the, the great thing is that like with an iPad, you know that the touchscreen is going to be good. And with an Android device, you know the touchscreen is going to be good versus the ones that you have in modern cars, uh, which, you know, are very hit or miss. Okay, so sitting in the rear, it's actually surprising that it's not all that cramped for me as someone who's 6'1". There's definitely vehicles I've tested like uh, the RC350 or the Scion FRS, which are definitely worse than this, uh, which are pretty much unusable. You know, you could definitely fit someone back here. I'm about 6'1", and you know, I could probably make it work if the driver was short enough. Uh, and where I'm seated, I don't really have that much headroom, but I'm told that the fuel tank, which is located under this, is going to be uh, lowered a bit. So in the actual version, I'll have a little bit more headroom in here than I currently do, which is nice to know. Now you do have a cup holder and you've also got a power outlet, so you're not kind of left totally in the dry back here. You know, there are some amenities and you also have this light right here as well. And you can see on the sides, of course, with these side windows. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. Not gonna use the seat belt, but it is a motorcycle. So technically, you know, it's uh, classified as one, so I don't really need to. Just feels a little strange sitting in this car seat, but of course, you know, the, the production versions will have that and you can strap in and you'll be safe. And that makes sense to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. All right, and then put it into drive. There we are. And we are off. So it does not have power steering. Uh, but when it only weighs 1,200 pounds, you know, that's not that big of a concern. So I don't find the steering to be all that difficult. And you also have to remember that this is not the production engine. I guess I have to keep telling myself. And this isn't the production version. So, you know, it'll probably feel quite a bit better than this. As is, the uh, throttle pedal feel uh, is pretty aggressive as far as... Uh, you know, you don't push much at all. It's pretty sensitive and it's going to be accelerating you. Brake pedal is also like that, you know, pretty sensitive to the touch. But once again, this is uh, not the production version. So, you know, it may be a little less sensitive once it gets to that, um, a little more natural feel to it. I don't think the throttle pedal feel is too bad. The brake pedal feel does need a little bit of work. You know, it's pretty touchy as is, but no worries. And the steering feel, you know, it's a really lightweight vehicle, so I can, you know, maneuver it around. Yeah, it takes more effort than what you're probably used to driving, but especially at speed, you're not gonna notice that because of uh, how light of a vehicle this is. So really not that big of a concern. Now, do I think this vehicle makes sense? Uh, and yes, I do. A lot of what people uh, do when they buy a car is it's, it's purely this emotional thing where, you know, you're buying something that kind of is another representation of yourself. Uh, and if you start to think about cars logically and how much uh, power uh, they have and how much weight they have and the fact that you use a, you know, 2,000 kilogram device in order to move a 60 kilogram or 70 kilogram person a certain distance, that's not all that logical. So it makes sense to take something, remove all the weight, make it far more aerodynamic, you get way better fuel economy, uh, and you can transport a human, which is the ultimate goal of most of the cases. You know, you don't always need this giant vehicle to get you somewhere. And so when that's the case, it makes a lot of sense. So there are definitely scenarios in which I think this has uh, a pretty valuable business case in that it's only seven grand, it comes with a warranty, it's gonna get awesome fuel economy, and it gets you from point A to point B with a passenger if you want, with a little bit of stuff in the back, you know, you can make your grocery trip uh, and get great fuel economy in a car that has a warranty rather than driving an old clunker. So I kind of admired it, honestly. I think it's a pretty cool idea, uh, and I think, you know, with some refinement, it's gonna be a pretty great vehicle to own. Now, I think Elio's biggest challenge, and uh, this is probably pretty obvious, but it's going to be the fact that uh, you're trying to sell a small vehicle in the American market. And when you do that uh, in the States, basically what happens is everyone cries, it's unsafe, uh, even when they probably have a motorcycle in the garage. So that's the thing that I think is going to be Elio's biggest marketing challenge is, you know, addressing to the American public that this actually can be a safe vehicle uh, to transport you. You know, I, I'm sure all the comments sections of videos and posts about this are probably filled with 
yeah, but what happens if you hit an SUV? Uh, similar to kind of what was said about the smart car. And so, you know, you just have to kind of take that in, in stride. That's just going to be something people are going to say. But, you know, they've done the testing. Uh, they've shown that they're probably going to end up getting a pretty good safety rating. They're looking at now five-star safety rating. So it's definitely possible to make something like this. It's got side airbags that go along these whole windshields, as well as one in the steering wheel. So the vehicle can be made safe, uh, certainly more safe than a motorcycle. And so, you know, it, you have to kind of admire that, the fact that, you know, it's not all that unsafe. Yes, it doesn't weigh much. So if you hit something that weighs significantly more, like, chances are not in your favor. But that pretty much goes with anything. If you get hit by a semi, no matter what you're in, you know, you're out of luck. So if you get in these smaller vehicles, uh, yeah, that's, that's a small risk, I think. But, you know, no more risk at all, if any, uh, than, you know, comparing it to people who ride motorcycles. Now, as of June 19th, 2015, recent changes under Regulation A allow for anyone to invest in private companies. For more information on the Elio, as well as crowdfunding opportunities, check out eliomotors.com. The link's in the video description. So, thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.